I just made the Raspberry Pi 400 a mobile desktop replacement with retro gaming. Fanboys, get those downvotes ready, because guess what? I'm back! What's up, YouTube? This is Hill Phantom. Today, I have my mobile edition of the Raspberry Pi 400. Just some things I did to modify to be, well, mobile and a standalone desktop. What I've done is I've cobbled together a couple different pieces to make that happen. What I'm gonna do right now is go through different pieces that I have and talk about how it comes together. Okay, let's talk about a couple parts I'm using in order to build this mobile desktop replacement. First and foremost, let's talk about the HDMI dongles. I have a micro HDMI headed to a regular female HDMI. I have an adapter that basically allows me to switch those HDI ports to attach the monitor. It also stands it up from the Pi itself. I have a USB dongle to power the OS. I know I could use something much faster. However, this is just a small form factor and it suits my need. Next to that, I have a 3.5 audio adapter. This is just something that I need or like so that I can power a speaker like this. Most of the time on the road, I'll probably use Bluetooth headset, uh, but I do like the ability to have an actual 3.5 audio. Above that is jumper cables that I'm gonna use to connect to the Pi's GPL ports to power the, the LCD. Now I chose this as a five inch LCD because you can power it by five volts off of the Pi itself. Next to that, I just have the N30 Pro. I like this controller a lot for retro gaming. As I had installed Retro Pi on top of Raspbian, this is a really neat thing that I can use if I wanna plug this up and make it into a retro gamer. Now the heart of this is the battery, 5,000 milliamp battery. That's pretty slim. I'm using this, attaching it to the underside here with double-sided tape like this so that I can power the whole unit. I'm also carrying with me just a Bluetooth mouse that I can connect to the Pi and make it work quite nicely. So now that we know about the parts, let's put it all together. All right, step one, let's put the battery pack on. So I've just laid some double-sided tape here. I'm going to line up this USB with this USB the best I can, but I also want to balance the keyboard. So we'll put it about right there. You might have to modify this a little bit. Then we'll take the, just a standard USB to a USB-C. So that will be our power supply. Once that's stuck on, bring this around eventually here. Then let's build out the HDMI post. So first we're gonna put this into this adapter. From there, we'll plug in the monitor, now this monitor is upside down by nature. You'll need to go in through the operating system and flip that. You can do it through, actually now through the GUI and Raspbian, through I think preferences or display preferences, just flip it 180. Now you can see we're eventually going to plug that in to the eight micro HDMI port on the Pi itself. Now let's go ahead and put in the USB operating system, the 2.0 port. Let's go ahead and put in the 3.5 audio adapter into that, all right. Now we're going to take the jumper cable. It's got one female end, one male end. We'll take the female end, we'll attach red in this case to five volts on the Pi, orange to ground on the Pi. Now we'll take the monitor. We've got five volts coming out of the Pi. We'll plug it in here to five volts on the monitor. And next to that, we will plug in the ground. So the Pi through the battery will power this monitor. Let me plug this in. There it is. There's your mobile Pi. So this solution, if you will, albeit somewhat fragile on the HDMI connection, is completely wireless. We'll power the display once we plug this in. Now, it's kind of sunny out here in my garage, so I'm gonna take you inside to show you the software and show you how it works. Let's get it. All right, we're back inside. I'm gonna power up. You can watch your startup. I've already written the script to flip the screen. Uh, you can also do that in preferences if you prefer, and we'll run it through some of its paces so to show you YouTube and maybe some retro gaming. Let's plug in the power. Let's see what she does. Voila. Let's see, Bluetooth automatically connects. Let's see what we can do with YouTube. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit now. 
so you can take a look. So let's go to YouTube. So that is video playback. You can see I didn't notice anything dropping, didn't stutter. Uh, it's pretty nice. So that is playing off of five volts, completely powered through the battery pack. Let's take a look at the other part of this, which is retro gaming. So let's roll into emulation station or retro pie. Connect my controller. And here we are. So let's take a look at Atari. Let's go. Set up heat. So there's an Atari game. Let's take a look at, I don't know, something on Team Gear. Uh, I don't know, let's pick something random. Not sure what to do here. There we go. All right, so let's get out of here. So here it is, mobile Raspberry Pi 400, completely untethered, no cords powering it, a battery pack. I've used a 3.5 adapter to plug in a speaker. Now I could use Bluetooth headphones. I showed you how good it looks on YouTube with very minimal frame loss, if any, and showed you retro gaming on it. So, you can use this, cobble together your solutions. I hope you'll like the video. And if you guys do anything any different, let me know. I'd love to see it. Until next time, this is Hill Phantom. Have a great week. Yeah.